Okay, guys, Dr. Tom is back. He's coming at you. He's here. He's with it. We're going to talk about Unit 5 today, or Chapter 5. Calculating adult dosages, oral and parenteral forms. And we probably don't know what parenteral is, but you'll know soon. All right, let's see. Introduction. Average adult dose is based on age, 20 to 60-year-old, weight of 150 pounds. That's what they're saying, the, the average dose is. So if it's less than 20 or more than 60, you have to modify it some, and it depends on weight, too. Okay. Oral and parenteral routes of administration. Oral route, by mouth, is the most commonly used. It's the safest, most convenient, and most economical. Parenteral, guys, this is a very important word. Go ahead and get it down now. It basically means giving injections. Technically, the, the uh, definition is... Uh, Medications are delivered in methods other than using the gastrointestinal tract, but for our purposes, a parenteral med is an injectable medication. Oral and parenteral routes of administration. Parenteral is the injection of liquid by means other than the alimentary canal, which is the gastrointestinal. Uh, subcutaneous goes under the skin. Intramuscular goes into the muscle. We come straight in with, in, with a needle. Intradermal goes right up under the skin. And then intravenous, of course, is an IV that they go into the vein with. So really, there's only three kinds of injections, and then there's an IV. Okay, weight and volume. Now remember in the metric system, weight is measured in grams. Volume is measured in liters. Now, of course, because medications are given in tiny doses, it's often in milligrams and sometimes in micrograms. And volume is in milliliters, a thousandth of a liter. Again, how big is a milliliter? Well, take a two liter Pepsi, cut it in half. That's one liter. Then cut that into a thousand little portions, and one of those is a milliliter. Uh, ounces and teaspoons and tablespoons are used some, but they're all part of the English system like we know. It's usually in, in, uh, in milliliters or, or uh, milligrams. In other words, like a, a capsule is usually in milligrams or micrograms. Uh, a liquid is usually in milliliters because it's volume versus weight. <laughs> Calculating adult dosage. When the dosage order is not the same as what's available, two methods can determine the correct dosage. One is the proportional method, the other is the formula method. Seek assistance if you have difficulty. Always make sure you administer the correct dosage. Why? It might make the patient sick, yes? And it also uh, may be ineffective because you didn't give enough. Now, guys, this some of this is going to look um, complicated, and it's too simple to put into a formula. That's why it looks complicated. Okay, use the proportional method. Determine if the unit ordered and the unit on hand are the same. Like if they give, they want to give a 500 milligram pill, and you've got them in 500 milligram tablets, yeah, you got it made, man. But if not, you got to figure it out. Set up proportion, calculate dosage, solving for X. Oh, like algebra. My God, prove your answer. Okay, now, guys, this looks pretty complicated. It's even hard for me to kind of follow along. But let's just look at it. We can reason this out very easily. Amoxyl 0.5 grams was ordered. You only have amoxyl 250 milligrams. Okay. How many? So the first thing you know is how many milligrams is 0.5? It's 500. So if the doctor wants a 500 milligrams of medicine given this dude and it's in 250 milligram tablets, how many you got to give them? Two. Do you need all this to figure that out? No. And on the test, the stuff that you have to do is no more, very, very little of it's any more difficult than this. So, yeah, you can go, okay, one milligram is one gram times 0.5 is 500, okay. Uh, a minus uh, X is equal to 500 milligrams. Uh, one cap equals. Uh, see all that crap? Well, you can just look at this and say, first thing you need to see is, okay, how many milligrams is, is point, a half a gram? It's 500. These are 250. How many is it going to take? Two. Determine if the unit ordered and unit on hand are the same. Again, if you happen to have 250 milligram tablets of this, you got it made in the shade, man. You don't have to do nothing.
Now, guys, I often, and let me, something I've never mentioned. I often use incorrect grammar on purpose. Why? Because it t sounds too snooty. So when I say, oh, yeah, man, it's like uh, you don't have to do nothing. I know that's not proper. And you should be, one doesn't have to do anything. You see how snooty and uppity that sounds? Calculate user and see dosage desire times quantity amount to give. Same thing. Okay, example. Noctec, one gram was ordered. You only have Noctec in 500 milligram capsules, okay? How many milligrams is a gram? And it's a thousand. So if if they want to give this the patient a thousand milligrams and all you have are 500 milligram capsules, how many are you going to have to give them? That's right, two. So you can go through all this. Or you can, these are, problems are so simple that you can just use ordinary logic to figure them out. And most of them on the test, the, the, each test will have maybe four or five uh, uh, dosage problems, and they're, they're along this line. Okay, medication measuring units. Some medications are ordered in units instead of milligrams. Standardized based on strength. Strength varies depending on source, condition, method by which obtained. Can be calculated using proportional formula method. Like vitamin D is in units, for example. Oh, okay, well, enough of that. And that's basically about all there is to it, guys. Now, there will be some problems later on about how to convert. If you have to give, uh, if the doctor gives you an order and you have to give so much medication per weight in kilograms, and you have their weight in pounds and you've got to convert it, but how many kilograms is in a pound? 2.2. .2. So you multiply it by, you know, uh, or uh, divide it by 2.2 .2 and you have them. The number of the weight in kilograms and you can so there's just that kind of stuff okay unit 16 antifungal antiviral immunizing agents viruses uh, guys as you know right now we're in a worldwide pandemic that hasn't been the likes of which hasn't been seen in over 100 years it's caused by a virus viruses can be a real problem uh herpes and uh HIV, AIDS, is, is caused by a virus. Of course, these are like a runny nose, HIV, smallpox, herpes. This is Epstein-Barr virus. Fungi, histoplasmosis, you catch these from birds. Candida are common fungal, or candida is a yeast, but a yeast is, a, I think, technically a fungi. Four phases of immune response recognition, white blood cells attack, attack phase, and slowdown phase. Oh, okay, they're hitting us with a lot of stuff here. Antifungal agents act by exert, exerting fungistatic. That means it kills them. No, it slows slows their uh, their reproduction down. Or fungicidal, which means it kills them. Used for systemic skin and mucous membrane infections. Contraindicate and uh, the indications would be hypersensitivity to them. Bone marrow depression, impaired renal function, of kidneys, pregnancy or lactation. Special consideration: wear gloves. Use appropriate Applicator do not contaminate medication can, container. Um, we have guys bacteria all over our skin, and they protect us against these fungal infections. Because when they get in there, they can be really hard to get rid of. Like you've seen people that have toenail fungus. Yeah. They have to take medication for months and months to get rid of that thing, which may be why so many of them don't do it. Antiviral agents, synthetic drugs to help to combat, com combat Specific viral diseases, herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster, which causes chicken pox and shingles, used for treatment and management, not a cure. The flu, influenza, used for prevention and treatment, but only for prevention in children. Flu can be really serious, guys. There's people that die from the flu. Neuroaminidase inhibitors blocks the function of viral neuroaminidase, is commonly used as antiviral for or for the flu. We've heard of Tammy flu. Apparently, if you get that in, if you take it soon enough, it'll it'll help prevent it or it'll uh, weaken the symptoms significantly. Relenza, okay, I don't know much about those things. Special consideration, antiviral drugs do not cure the flu. Flu may be used for prevention treatment of adults, but only for prevention of children. Which probably is used to treat Parkinson's disease. I'll say Zaminophia is used for those with uncomplicated flu who've been symptomatic no more than two days. Fussings are not substitutes for the flu vaccine. 
apparently this Tamiflu is what I what little I know about is that if you can get it before it's been two days, it'll it'll knock it out of there, make a big difference. Okay, a retrovirus is an RNA virus that injects its DNA into the host's nucleus and takes over and starts making more. So it's, it, it's an RNA virus, but it injects its DNA. Or general class of the virus. So uh, these things help treat HIV infection, you know, which is a human, a human immunodeficiency virus is what causes AIDS. Uh, they've gotten very successful treatments for AIDS now, but they're they're pretty intense and they have to be kept up. But before, I mean, a few years ago, it was a you know basically a death wish. Interrupts virus replication, inhibits HIV production, and interrupts the last stage of viral replication, prevents HIV from entering the T cells. That's what they work on, guys. They work on the T cells and the helper and suppressor cells. They change that ratio, and that's enough to kill you in time. Heart, let's see. Highly active antiretroviral therapy. It's basically the the uh, HIV co uh, cocktail that they give. Interrupt early stage of virus replication, slows the spread of HIV, delay onset of opportunistic infections. Because HIV results in a weakened immune system, guys, because of that ratio of helper and suppressor cells. And because of that, it opens you these four victims up to unusual cancers like Carposi sarcoma and unusual skin diseases and things because it messes with the immune system. So if it can delay the onset of these opportunistic infections, which is what that is, then it's worthwhile. Does not prevent transmission to others. The NNRTIs uh, inhibit HIV production, prevent conversion of RNA to DNA. That's good. Uh, PIs are protease inhibitors, inhibit virus replication later step in the life cycle. Prevent HIV from being assembled and released from the CD4-1 T cells. FIs prevent HIV from entering healthy T cells reserved for patients who have failed initial regimes. Here's the uh, I think of this HART as being like a the cocktail for HIV that they they talk about it. Several drugs in one. Combination of antiretroviral drugs, success lies in ability to disrupt HIV at different stages of replication. Use of at least three antiviral, uh, antiretroviral agents have shown significant effect, decrease in morbidity, which is being sick, and mortality, and, and how long you live, or the, the death rate, in other words. Antiretroviral agents, side effects, neutropenia, which means that you have, don't have enough neutrophils, the white blood cell, anemia. Pancreatitis, peripheral neuropathy, where you're having numbness or tingling or problems in your hands and feet. Special considerations for antiretroviral agents. Treatment does not cure HIV infection. The virus may be, not be detectable after treatment, but still present, still can be spread. Combination therapy is very expensive. The virus may rebound if the regimen is discontinued. Yeah, I, I have a friend who uh, worked in an AIDS clinic some years ago, and I asked him about it. And he said, as long as they'll, they'll take the drugs, they can live a normal lifespan out. But if they go off of them, they quit taking them, and they do that a few times, it'll get where it won't be effective anymore, and they'll die. Of course, they know that if they don't do it, but there's still people who don't do it. That's what this rebound is. It gets where it doesn't. It's ineffective. So I don't know, guys, you know, maybe maybe it's uh, quite unpleasant to take. I don't think so, but, you know, if your life depends on it, it looks like you'd get your butt in gear and take it. But, you know, you say, well, Dr. Tom, maybe they don't have the money, but I think they make it, a, it's available for people regardless, you know, through me Medicaid and stuff. Any retrovagal agents you have you may interact with other common drugs, prompt or worsen diabetes, I didn't know that, cause weight redistribution, increase risk of stroke or heart attack, Interact with other common drugs, prompt or worsen diabetes, increase risk of stroke or heart attack. So it does have, guys, some potential really serious side effects. But the other side effect is to die from it. So, you know, you have to make up your mind here. Okay, we're almost out of time. When we come back, we'll talk about immunizations. Dr. Tom is going to sign off. We'll see you there, be there, or be square.